Have you ever had that feeling that there is a 99% chance you might die? The moment that your life could have ended in a second. Because I have. My name is Jacob and this incident happened last year in 2023. I was 17 and I took a job at Burger King to make some money. I was never the type of person to beg my parents for money like most kids and teenagers do. If I wanted money, I would work for it. When I was a kid, I would shovel snow out of neighbors' driveways to make some money for a toy I wanted. And in the summer, I would mow neighbors' lawns for extra money. Anyways, for the first few months I worked at Burger King, I didn't really have that many problems. Sure, I've had to deal with a few Karens and angry customers, but it wasn't anything where I felt like my life was in danger. That would end up changing on that fateful day in August 2023. One of the highlights working at Burger King for me was being able to work with Maria. I had a gigantic crush on her. She was a little bit older than me by a few years, but I didn't care. We just had that chemistry of a couple that has been dating for years. And I knew deep down, she felt the same too. When she told me she broke up with her boyfriend a few weeks before the incident happened, I couldn't be more excited. At that time, my 18th birthday was coming up in a month, and when I turned 18, I decided I would ask her out. But that didn't happen, and you'll soon find out why. It was just a normal day working at Burger King on a Friday. Maria was working in the kitchen with another woman named Bethany, while I was working at the cashier with Bethany's fiancé Cody, who were getting married next year. When suddenly, a 240-pound man barged in the restaurant. He looked like he was either in his late 20s or early 30s. He came right to the counter and said, I need to speak to Maria now. Now, obviously, I don't know who this man was, so I said, I'm sorry, sir. Who are you? It doesn't matter if you know who I am. I know Maria knows who I am, so let me talk to her. He yelled in an aggressive tone. At that point, I was starting to get annoyed, but again, I never thought I was in any real danger. I just thought he was just a typical angry customer. I was about to yell at him when suddenly, I saw something that made my skin white as a ghost. In his pocket was a shotgun. It was at that moment, I knew my life was in danger for the first time in my life, because I knew if I raised my voice to this man, I would be dead. So instead of trying to get this man out of the restaurant, I made the worst decision I ever made because what happened not only changed my life, but multiple people's lives. I went to the kitchen in the back and told Maria that there was someone wanting to see her. I don't know why I told her that. Maybe because I was being selfish, because I didn't want to die. However, that gave me no right to put someone else's life in danger. However, as you'll soon find out, none of that would even matter. As soon as Maria went up to the counter, I immediately heard a gunshot, but I heard screams throughout the restaurant. I ran up to the counter to see the most sickening sight I have ever seen in my life. At the counter, I saw Maria on the floor with parts of her brain all over the counter. As soon as I saw that, I screamed louder than I ever screamed before. At that moment, I heard another gunshot, and I felt a shooting pain in my hip as I realized I've been shot. I fell on the floor rolling in pain. While I was in pain, I heard gunshot after gunshot as people were dying on the spot, and it was all my fault. If I just found a way to get rid of this guy, call the cops, anything, this whole thing could have been avoided. You're probably wondering, where is our manager? Well, because usually on Fridays, the manager isn't there. I was thinking to myself, since I was still alive, if I didn't move, the killer would believe I was dead and leave me alone. However, while I was playing dead, I saw Bethany and Cody begging the killer not to shoot them. I could see they were literally hugging each other for comfort when the killer shot both of them in the head. It took everything in my body not to scream as I passed out from pain. I woke up in the hospital with my parents by my side. The doctor said I was lucky because if they got there any later, I would have died by bleeding out. Eventually, a police officer came in and revealed who that man was. The man was Gerardo Vasquez Alvarez. He was Maria's ex-boyfriend. Apparently, about two weeks ago, Gerardo and Maria got into a huge argument causing Maria to break up with Gerardo. According to the officer, Gerardo had been planning this shooting a week in advance. As I would soon learn, I was the only survivor that day. I asked the officer how did he know that there was a shooting happening. He said even though the manager wasn't in the Burger King, there were security cameras all over the restaurant and he was looking at the camera from his home. As soon as he saw Gerardo shoot Maria, he immediately called the cops. It's been almost a year since the incident. I obviously don't work at Burger King anymore. In fact, I don't think I ever want to see a Burger King anymore. 
I will never forgive myself for how I handled the situation. Not only Maria's life would have been saved, but dozens of other lives would have been saved. Bethany and Cody would probably be married by now, and they aren't because of my stupidity. I dropped out of school. I just couldn't handle school due to my mental health. I am going to the therapist. I just hope I can forgive myself for what I've done. However, I will probably live with this guilt for the rest of my life. My time at Burger King was pretty good. I know that many people say that it is a very ugly job and that they are or were only there on a temporary basis. Even though it was only a part-time job for me, too, I really appreciated the experience. I met some great people that I now consider my friends. I learned to work in a team and to do it at a very high speed. I also learned how to deal with customers and always strive to make sure they have the best experience possible. But unfortunately, I also met the worst kind of person I could have ever met. And the experience I took away from that encounter was one of the worst of my short life. That day, I met Austin Addison, and after that experience, nothing was the same. The day everything changed began like any other. It was a hot summer afternoon, and the restaurant was full of eager customers in a hurry to be served as quickly as possible. I was at the cash register, taking orders and trying to keep a smile on my face despite the stress. I had a bad day because of some problems at home. Little did I know that it was about to get much, much worse. The line was moving slowly forward when Austin Addison arrived. His angry expression and aggressive manner of speaking immediately put me on alert. He was ordering chicken wings, and from the very first moment, something in his attitude told me that he would not be an easy customer. After waiting for his wings, he returned to his chair. Every time I took his order, he treated me in the worst possible way. But the customer had his food, and it was time to move on to the next customer. Little did I know that my interaction with Austin was just beginning. After a few minutes, the man came angrily to the cash register. On his tray was his food. The food was already chewed, and he had clearly spit it out immediately. At that moment, I knew I was going to be in trouble. What the hell is this? These wings are too spicy. I specifically told them not to make them so spicy. Are you so useless that you don't know how to make chicken wings? Do you have to go back to school to interpret an order? At that moment, I had a great feeling of anger combined with fear. Anyway, I knew that we always run the risk of having a difficult customer, so I tried to explain to him that we could change his order. Sir, if you wish, we can prepare other wings with less spice. No problem. I'm really sorry they made them so spicy. I don't want your damn apologies. I want that when a customer asks for something as simple as the wings not to be spicy, go make them spicy! I still remember that man's face at that moment. It was red with fury. His shouting attracted the attention of other customers and the atmosphere became tense. Do you know what's going on? You are not interested in following the order given to you by the customers. The wings are already done, and you use the spice to hide the fact that the food is terrible garbage. You're criminals! Sir, we are doing our job. Please don't yell at me. You are an accomplice! You are also in the thieves! You are not more than them! You should be in jail! Sir, we can't keep serving you with that attitude. I remind you that all of this is being recorded and... Interrupting me and without warning, he slapped me hard in the face. The pain and surprise left me paralyzed for a moment. Learn to do your job, you thief! And without another word, after slapping me, the man simply left. We called the police and they all came up to me, consoling me and asking me if everything was alright. I tried to hold back the tears and went on with my work, telling everyone that the tense moment was over and that it was fine. A few hours later, evening came, and it was finally time to go home. All my companions left, but I stayed a few more seconds to get some air before I started pedaling home. After a few minutes of quiet, I noticed that the parking lot was deserted and silent, a quietness that seemed strange after the chaos of the day. I mounted my bike and started pedaling home. I had gone a few meters and was about to leave the parking lot when I heard the roar of an engine behind me. Before I could react, I felt a brutal impact that threw me to the ground. A car had rammed me, and I was lying there injured and confused. When the car stopped, I thought a man was getting out to apologize and maybe take me to the hospital. 
I stared at the man getting out of the car, and when I could understand who it was, I was shocked. Did you think this was over, you little thief? He muttered before getting out of the car. I tried to get up and run, but the pain prevented me from doing so. Austin came over and started hitting me again. You thought I was going to walk away and leave you with my money? That you weren't going to suffer any consequences for working with these scammers? Not only will you pay for my damn chicken wings, but you will pay for all the times they scammed me! I tried to defend myself and hit him, but that only made him angrier. I managed to get away and stand up to run as far as I could, but the man was much more athletic and caught up with me in a matter of seconds. I tried to hit him with anything I could, but the man had gone completely crazy. He was out of his mind. Every attempt to escape was in vain. As soon as I managed to push him away, he would catch me in less than half a meter and hit me with uncontrolled fury. You're going to learn to respect the customers. Do you think you're better just because you work here? Do you think you're better than anyone else? You're a piece of trash that only knows how to make hamburgers. You shouldn't even be breathing the same air as me, you useless little bloodsucker! After the man hit me again and again, I felt my strength leaving me, but I couldn't give up. I did everything I could. I, I, I screamed for help. I tried to bite him. I tried to hit him too, but it was useless. My vision started to go white. Everything felt very confusing, and I could barely feel the blows. Just when I felt I couldn't resist any longer, I heard voices and saw flashlights. The security of the place had not left yet. Alerted by the noise of the fight, they arrived on the scene and immediately recognized me. Austin, unaware that he was outnumbered, continued to attack me. He didn't even care if he was caught, he just wanted to beat me to death. The men threw themselves at him and were able to hold him off. Meanwhile, Austin left me lying on the ground, breathing hard, but alive. However, his desperation was such that he managed to free himself momentarily, running back to me with a crazed expression on his face. The man was screaming at me as he ran. He had a horrible look on his face. I felt he was going to grab me with his hands and tear me apart. I thought this would be the end, but the security staff acted fast, stopping him again just before he could reach me. Let me go, you pigs! You think you're all cops? I will kill you! I'll kill you and the cook! I'll kill you all! In a last attempt to escape, the psycho bit one of the security guards and broke free. This time, instead of trying to kill me, he ran out of the parking lot and escaped. The other security employee didn't even chase him, he just kept checking to see if his co-worker was okay. The police arrived shortly thereafter, and I gave them a description of Austin. It wasn't long before they found him and arrested him, facing charges for his violent behavior and attempted murder. The days following the attack were a mixture of relief and trauma. Knowing that Austin was in custody gave me some peace of mind, but the fear and anxiety remained. News of the incident spread quickly, and the video of the slapping went viral, although nothing of what happened afterward was ever reported. You know, I really don't feel at ease. As much as I loved Burger King, I had to quit early. The fact that this psychopath's charges were not that big makes me think that in a short time he could be released on parole and I knew that, at that point, he would come after me. I always tell people that this experience made me much stronger and more confident, that I am now able to stand on my own and I will never again allow anyone to try to hurt me. To be honest, it's a lie. I am more afraid today than I was before. I realize that you really are not completely safe anywhere and that when something bad has to happen to you, like meeting the wrong person, it will happen, and you will regret living that day for the rest of your life. Get fucking jail for the robbery of Stony Stop. So she needs to get the fuck out of here before I get her put in jail for the rest of her life. Sir, you are on camera right now. Hello guys. My name is Ricardo. I'm a manager at Burger King, and although you may not know me, you may have seen me in that video that went viral in which I defended my employees from two elderly women who were being xenophobic and telling them that we can't speak Spanish in their restaurant. After that evening, the networks exploded with comments of support and hate. Many comments got through to me, but I couldn't believe the amount of horrible comments I read. I didn't let it bother me, though. They are just internet comments anyway. The problem was, when instead of unknown people behind a computer, I met real people. 
And those weren't just strangers. They were the children of one of those ladies. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and I was taking a break in the Burger King parking lot. As I was smoking a cigarette, I noticed a dusty old pickup truck that caught my attention. Two guys were leaning against it, just staring at me. The older one, tall and burly, with an unkept beard, was the one who approached first. His brother, shorter and thinner, but this man's stare made him the more frightening of the two. Hey, are you the guy from the video? Sir, I am on my break, please. I don't want any trouble. <laughs> Did you hear? He doesn't want any trouble. You should have thought of that before you messed with an old lady, especially our mama. I felt a knot in my stomach. These were the sons of one of the older women. I tried to walk faster, but they followed me, blocking my way. You thought humiliating an old lady would have no consequences, huh? I tried to stay calm and talk to them, but it was useless. They grabbed me and pushed me against the wall. I was the only one taking the break so early, and we were in the back. Unless a customer came, I would have no way to escape. The older one held me down while the younger one approached with a knife. If they acted fast, I would have no way to save myself. Hey, hey, easy boy. We're not going to do anything serious to you. Huh, <laughs> yet. We just want to clear up the misunderstanding. The younger man cut my arm slightly with a razor, just enough to make me bleed, but not to seriously hurt me. I cried out in pain, and they laughed. The things you said, they hurt our mama much more than that wound I just gave you. She's an old lady, and she's very sad. I don't care that she's sad. You know what she told me. I don't care what she said to you, you bean rat. I want you to apologize to her. I want you to post a video on the internet telling her you were wrong. Do that, or I assure you, my mama will be the last old lady you disrespect. Understand? Having said that, he let go of me and simply walked away, as if nothing had happened. I staggered back to my work. I just couldn't believe what had happened. My co-workers noticed my condition, and I automatically told them everything that had happened to me. I called the police. I told them what had happened, and they assured me that they would keep an eye on the area. That calmed me down a bit, but still, I knew that the police could not be there at all times. I was afraid. When it was time to close the Burger King, one of my co-workers offered me a ride in his car. I said no. The last thing I wanted to do was to put one of my employees at risk. He knocked me some more, but he finally left. I know it would have been better to go with him, but I admit that I took my role as manager very seriously, and I must also say that I am a bit stubborn. Once I left, I walked as fast as I could, with my head down. But suddenly, the same van appeared, stopping abruptly next to me. The two brothers got out and surrounded me, did you think we weren't serious? You didn't apologize, buddy. We warned you. This time, you're in trouble. I tried to fight back, but they were too strong. They dragged me into a dark alley, far from anyone's sight. They threw me to the ground, and the older one climbed on top of me, pinning me down. The younger one approached me, smiling. We're going to have some fun with you, but this is for your own good. It seems they didn't teach you any manners in your home country. You're a damn immigrant who doesn't know his place. The younger one began to cut me slowly with the razor, enjoying every moment of my suffering. The cuts were shallow, but they hurt like hell. I felt the hot blood running down my skin as I struggled to maintain consciousness. Let's make you understand that you can't humiliate our mama. They started kicking me. The blows were constant and brutal. Every time I tried to get out, they knocked me down again. Do you know what bothers us the most? That you think you're better than us. Y'all come here to take our jobs from us. And on top of that, you dare to disrespect us. They picked me up and pushed me against the wall. The youngest took out his phone and started recording. 
Tell everyone what you really are. With fear and pain consuming me, I tried to speak, but the words wouldn't come out. The two brothers laughed and hit me again. Come on, say something. Say you're a useless immigrant and nothing more. <laughs> I'm a useless immigrant. I thought this would stop them, but their laughter only got louder. They were just getting started. See? That's better. Doesn't it feel good to love you for who you are? Now get down on the ground and make pig noises. I want to see you crawling around like the animal you are. In pain and afraid of dying if I didn't obey, I got down on all fours and started making pig noises, crying as I did so. Tears streamed down my face as they laughed and recorded everything. That's it. Keep it up. You seem to be only rude when you talk to old ladies, don't you? Every time I tried to stop, they kicked me harder. I felt like I couldn't breathe. The pain was unbearable. Come on, pig. Make more noise. Squeal for me. They kept kicking and hitting me, enjoying every moment. I could do nothing but obey, waiting for it to end. They were laughing their heads off. And the worst part was that it seemed like they were just getting started. These men had not the slightest intention of setting me free. They were going to kill me. I couldn't just stand here indulging them. I had to do something. While one of the brothers was filming, the older one was distracted for a moment. I seized the opportunity. With all of my strength, I lunged at the younger one, knocking him to the ground. The camera fell from his hand and broke. The bigger guy tried to grab me, but I managed to dodge him and punch him hard in the stomach. The guy doubled over in pain, and I took the opportunity to punch him in the face. I felt his teeth break as I hit him. The younger guy recovered and came at me with a knife. I managed to grab his arm and twist it, making him drop the weapon. I used my whole body to ram him, pushing him against the wall. I started punching him repeatedly in the face and body, unloading all my rage and fear. The old man tried to hit me again, but I quickly grabbed the knife and showed it to him. I told him to stay still or I would kill him. I told him that if he tried to run away, I would kill his brother. As the man stood still as a sort of hostage, I called the police. The younger brother was unconscious. I knew he could no longer do anything to me. When the police arrived, the brothers were arrested, but first they had to go to the hospital. I couldn't believe I survived that. I am not a confrontational person. I don't know how to fight, and I never tried to fight. But when my life was at risk, I guess I just let out all the pent-up anger I had at the insults and attacks I received, just because I was born in another part of the planet. Eventually, I began to recover. All my colleagues were impressed and told me to take this news to the media, but I really preferred not to. I just couldn't bear to start all over again. The criticism, the insults, the people defending these men, and the death threats. Honestly, I'd rather it end like this. After that, I went on with my work as usual. Nothing had changed. People were still making xenophobic comments, and I feared that sooner or later these men would try to attack me again. Just in case, I carry a gun now. Although in a tight situation... I don't know if having a weapon would work against me. Nowadays, I just take it one step at a time, trying to live my ordinary days as best as I can. Go back to Mexico if you want, you want to keep speaking Spanish. Go back to your Mexican country, your state. Guess what, ma'am? I'm not Mexican. I'm not Mexican, but you're being very prejudiced, and I want you out of my restaurant right now. I'll finish my meal, and then I'll... You know what? I will, no, I'll, I'll do it for you, man. I'll call the cops. Have you trespassed?